Here's an interesting stat. Every halving adds a zero, meaning it increases the market cap of the Bitcoin asset by tenfold. So we went from one to 10 in the first halving, then we went from 10 to 100, went from 100 to 1,000, went to 10,000 in the last one. And I think, you know, January, February next year, we go to, to the 100K and, uh, and we'll surpass that because then the next one after that, you know, brace yourselves, right, is a million four years later mm-hmm. in 2028. Um, people say that could never happen. Mm-hmm. No, it will happen. It, yeah. It's just going to take time. Bitcoin bull and American hedge fund manager Mark Yusko recently spoke out about the industry's recent upswing. The seasoned investor, whose firm provides advice to endowments, pensions, and the wealthy, says this. The price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies may be temporarily affected by the numerous macro-environmental events currently taking place. Popular hedge fund manager Paul Barron shared his macro predictions for the year 2023 in a recent interview. He explains that the U.S. economy has been in a recession since at least April of last year, as evidenced by a number of economic indicators. His description of the recession's depth is strikingly similar to that of the economic downturn of 2001. Some fundamental and technical liquidation issues that could impact the price of leading crypto assets are discussed in his interview as well. There's a interesting thing going on this year, Paul, that hasn't happened for a long time. So years ago, there used to be something called the January effect, where people would sell their losers in December for the tax loss. Right. And they had to wait 30 days to buy them back. So in January, all the stuff that was horrible the year before did really, really well. And it was known as the January effect. And it was really small cap and micro cap names by and large. And that, that's where the excess returns for the year came from. Well, they changed the tax laws a number of years ago that made mutual funds sell by October 31st, not December 31st. And so the January effect got shifted to November. So if you look in the middle of November, just about every year, you have this two, three week period where the crappiest companies, right? The things that were just horrible all year did really well. And you didn't get the January effect. Well, this year, mm-hmm. last year was so bad. Like everything was down. Stocks were down, bonds were down, small cap, large cap, international, emerging markets, everything was down, crypto. So the regular folks actually did some tax loss selling. So those tax loss sales were of the horrible companies like Peloton and Zoom and AMC. Right. And they now are rallying in in a huge short squeeze. And Bitcoin, I I think I have this right, Um, Binance just had over a $500 million collapse of shorts on their platform. So we are way oversold. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sorry, way overbought. We are as overbought as I've ever seen Bitcoin. So I still believe we're in crypto spring. Crypto winter's over. We got through Hurricane Sam, which I didn't anticipate. And that's where we went. We were at kind of 18,000. And that's what I thought was the bottom. And then we had Hurricane Sam that took us down to 15. And now, you know, when we got back to 18, that to me is, is spring. Spring is choppy, ugly, not really up and to the right. Up and to the right is summer. Summer's still three, four, five months off in anticipation of the halving. But, right. you know, so could we have a retracement back to 18 before we head? Uh, you know, we're not, you know, there are a lot of people saying we're gonna be new all time highs this year. Possible? possible. That's interesting. Um, definitely likely in early 24. Uh, if Barry and, and Grayscale are forced to liquidate GBTC, hmm. which, you know, there's there's a bunch of shareholders that are you know, kind of coming together to try to force that issue, right? Closed end funds can get taken over by their shareholders and can yeah. be forced to liquidate. Now, the The bar is a little higher with GBTC, as I understand it, with the structure. Like a lot of closed-end funds, you only need about 10, 11% of shareholders to get a special vote. I think the the number here is higher than that, maybe even as high as 50. I don't don't know that number exactly. But but even so, um, if, and that's capital I, capital F, if GBTC trust was forced to close and we basically sold 10 billion, now probably closer to to 11 or 12 billion dollars of a BTC. That's about 10% of 
available circulating supply, right? Not right. total supply, but remember, 65, 70% of Bitcoin hasn't moved in three years. It's yeah. not going to move. So the, the, the free float is what we have to talk about. And GBTC owns, as I understand it, about 10% of the free float. Mm -hmm. Now, if that were liquidated, everyone says, oh, it'd be horrible. It'd be, you know, be straight down. Well, remember, for every seller, there's a buyer. And I think there's a lot of money waiting to get back in. And so I think it would be bad short term, but I don't think it'd be a disaster. And I think we could, could handle it. Now, I also think Barry has said, you can take GBTC when you pry it from my cold dead hands. Okay, that, that's pretty strong. So I, I don't think it's gonna get liquidated. So if it doesn't get liquidated, I, I, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Now, when I say pretty good shape, I mean, I think this is a short squeeze. I think we'll have a retracement, a pullback. I think it's still positive. And short of a liquidation of GBTC, I think we are in the beginnings of the accumulation phase again, right? In the four-year cycle, we have crypto winter, spring, summer, and fall. We were in winter, now we're in spring. Summer's still coming. And summer is when you get the big parabolic move and then fall, you get the kind of consolidation and, and heading back into winter. Um, so I think all that is good. The, the, the one thing that, that I do struggle a little bit with is uh, the technicals versus the fundamentals. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are looking at technicals and, and yeah, the technicals look good. You got, you got a rising, you know, 50 day breaking through the, the declining 200 day. That's a big positive. We got a, a momentum thrust out of the, the bottom. Um, but that, that oversold RSI is, is troubling, right? If, I mean, our thing about RSI, it, it doesn't have any plateaus, right? Never, ever, ever does it go up into the seventies and stay right. there. It yeah. goes up higher than you think. And then it goes back yeah. down. I mean, it's a oscillating pattern for a reason. So, um, that, so, so, so there's, there's those, but the, the thing that, that is more concerning for me is the fundamental part, right? What Sam at all, and again, I don't think it was Sam or Caroline. I think they're useful idiots of some sure. much smarter, bigger, you know, sinister plot. Um, I, I think that damaged credibility and confidence. And, and that's what new markets need. If you think yeah. of anything, think about the first time you went to put your credit card into the internet, how scary yeah. that was, how <laughs> uncomfortable you were with the technology. Was it really encrypted? Would it get stolen? Was I safe? Now we don't think about it. We don't, yeah. we throw our credit card around everywhere. And no big deal, because now we're comfortable with the tech. When there are breaches still to this day, when Visa gets breached and a bunch of data gets stolen, people say, oh, I'm not going to use my credit card for a while. We'll look right And past so it. damaging confidence is what slows technological adoption. So mm -hmm. look, is Bitcoin a better form of money? 100%. Is Bitcoin a better form of gold? 100%. Is Bitcoin the future of value transaction? 100%, right? having a source of truth on chain as opposed to trust in intermediary financial institutions is a superior model. It, it just is. It's as superior yeah. as you and I using the internet to communicate instead of smoke signals or the old landline telephone, right? This is superior. Um, yeah, for sure. Although I don't like the fact that it's HD. I look better in like, you know, you know <laughs> fuzzy. Um, but uh, I, I do worry that that we need confidence to come back. We need some, some trusted parties, you know, people with good reputation to really get out in front. Uh, you know, I, I urge the gem, the, the Winklevoss twins to take that role. Uh, trustworthy guys, you know, smart guys. Um, you know, they're the victims here. If you think about what happened to them, right. You know, Genesis yeah. welched on, on the loan, right? Okay. You could argue that Gemini made a, risk management mistake by having counterparty risk that was too concentrated, you sure. could make that argument. I, I probably wouldn't, but you could. Um, 
and and full disclosure, like we're we're owners. I mean, we're not big owners, but we're owners. Um, but I, I like those guys, and I think they are the types of people that could really do a good job helping to engender trust. Despite this, Bitcoin has remained stable in the upper $22,000 range, and a number of prominent analysts and investors predict that the cryptocurrency will likely rally to $25,000 in the coming weeks. To what extent do you agree with Mark Yusko's forecasts for the Bitcoin market? Leave a comment with your ideas below, and we appreciate you tuning in to Market Empire. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.